everybody! Today I am joined with my friend Spotty and Spotty is a spotted salamander. Spotty is a very old salamander. These guys can live to be about 20 or 30 years old. Um, we don't actually know how old Spotty is, but um, we think that Spotty is quite old because Spotty has actually lost his spots. So spotted salamanders are usually identifiable by the bright yellow spots that they have on their body, but Spotty, as he's gotten older, has lost them. In general, it is not good to take wild animals out of their home and keep them as pets, but we are allowed to own Spotty the Spotted Salamander because we are a nature center, so we have the proper permits to own native wildlife. But in general, if you see a spotted salamander outside, it's okay to look at them. It's okay to even pick them up as long as you put them back in their home where they came from. Spotted salamanders live in the eastern third of the United States and then also up into eastern Canada. Their habitat tends to change throughout the seasons and also their lifetime. Their life starts as eggs in vernal pools, which they hatch out of and spend their larval state in the water. And then from there, they move, move to the land. So then they live in a terrestrial habitat. And then over the winter time, they spend their time underground when they um, go dormant for the winter. Typically, these guys live in dark wooded areas. They like to live under leaf litter, rotten logs, and stones. Spotted salamanders are amphibians, which means that they are cold-blooded, lay eggs, and that they also can breathe and absorb water through their skin. Spotted salamanders also undergo a metamorphosis. So many amphibians like frogs go through a metamorphosis where they change from using gills to breathe to using lungs. Typically these guys are not seen. They are pretty secretive animals. Um, they really only come out in the early spring when they make their migration to the vernal pools where they lay their eggs. And for the most part, this only happens on rainy evenings. So it is pretty unlikely that you'll see them and it's extra special if you do. Spotted salamanders return to the same vernal pool that they were born in, and they tend to come back every single year. Um, the reason why they choose vernal pools is because there are no fish in them. So fish can't survive in vernal pools because the pools dry up for part of the year, usually in the late summertime, and fish will eat these guys' eggs. Spotted salamanders have a really cool symbiotic relationship with green algae. So when these guys lay their eggs in vernal pools, they are surrounded by this kind of gooey jelly that keeps the eggs from drying out. That being said, that jelly also makes it really hard for the eggs to get oxygen. So that's where the algae comes in. The algae kind of intermingles with the jelly and the eggs, and there it goes through photosynthesis and creates oxygen that the developing salamander can eat up and metabolize. The salamander then creates carbon dioxide, which the algae eats. Salamanders are insectivores, which means that they mainly eat bugs and then other invertebrates. So in the wild, these guys would eat slugs, snails, ants, millipedes, little creepy crawlies. And at Earth Place, we feed Spotty mainly mealworms and crickets. As larvae, when they are in the water, they will also eat aquatic invertebrates like isopods and um, little fairy shrimp and things like that. Adult spotted salamanders tend to be food for things like birds, um, some mammals, and then snakes. And then oftentimes spotted salamanders are usually more at risk when there are eggs, which um, will be eaten by different frogs and crayfish and things like that. But spotted salamanders have some really cool ways to protect themselves from predators. So for one, they can secrete this kind of toxic milky liquid from their skin, which makes them smell and taste unpleasant. They will also butt heads and bite predators that are attacking them. Salamanders can also lose different parts of their body and then regrow them. So you might have heard of geckos or some other lizards being able to lose their tails and then be able to regrow them. But salamanders can go one step further and regrow all different parts of their body. So they've been shown to lose tails, legs, and even different organs, parts of their head and their brain, and be able to regrow them again. Salamanders are considered an indicator species, which means that they're one of the first signs that an environment is changing, and usually for the worst. So these guys haven't been doing too well. Um, they've been steadily declining. That being said, these guys are not endangered, um, but in general, their population has been decreasing. 
This is likely due from habitat loss and deforestation. Like I said, these guys need to live in forested regions and they also need to have access to vernal pools. So the more that we develop, the less those habitats are available for them. Also, because they can breathe through their skin and absorb water through their skin, things like acidity affects them very seriously. So when the pH of the water changes because of acid rain, these guys can get sick and do not do well. In Connecticut, 4 out of 12 species of salamanders or one third of species of salamanders in Connecticut are on the endangered species list. It's really important that we protect their habitat because they play a super important role in our ecosystems. They eat bugs that we don't like and they provide food for other animals that live in vernal ponds. They also have that symbiotic relationship with the algae that I mentioned. So they're super, super important animals for our ecosystem. And also America has the most amount of species of salamanders than any other country in the world. So it's really important that we preserve this really cool thing about the United States. So that's pretty much it on my friend Spotty the Salamander. I hope you enjoyed learning a thing or two about these guys and I hope to see you again next time.